Hi guys, welcome to another reading vlog. So for today's reading vlog, I thought I would read one of those horror Amazon collections. There are so many cool like short story collections that are Amazon originals and I've always wanted to try them and I thought, why not? Let's start with a creature feature. So this is a collection of six horror stories and the common theme is obviously creatures and from the six stories four of the authors I have previously read and two are new to me. So I thought I would read this one and let you guys know what I thought of the collection, what I thought about the stories. It's coffee time! We have The Prem by Joe Hill and obviously I have read other books by Joe Hill. Um, one of my favorites so far has been Nosferatu. I would reread this book anytime and if you're already looking for winter reads this is a perfect Christmas book. Then we have Ankle Snatcher by Grady Hendrix, another author that I have read a lot and uh, I think my favorites by him are probably The Final Girl Support Group which I know many people hate it but I kind of enjoy it. Um, I really liked How to Sail a Haunted House even though it was not exactly what I expected and obviously Horror Store was great just because of how unique and different it was. It Waits in the Woods by Josh Malaman and from Josh Malaman I really fell in love with Bird Box. Mallory was fine, I really liked Daphne but then some of his short horror stories have not really worked for me um, so we shall see how this one goes. In Bloom by Paul Tremblay. It's another author that I have read and I have really enjoyed his books. They are all quite different but I think for me that feeling of reading for the first time The Cabin at the End of the World is it has to be still one of my favorites. Best of Luck by Jason Mott and this is an author that I do not know. I have not read his books before so I'm excited to try. Same goes for Big Bad by Chandler Baker. I have never read her books before so from the six, four I have read quite extensively. Maybe not the whole catalog but a lot. And two, are completely new to me so we shall see how it goes. I'm gonna aim to read one short story a day, maybe two, we shall see how it goes, but all the stories go from 30 to 60 pages so they are fairly short um, and I'm hoping to read these in just one week so I can tell you guys what I thought of it. The moment I sit down, you guys, to record, to work, to do absolutely anything, cat on the lap. Cat on the lap every single time. Jesus, what do you want? Anyway, I was about to start <laughs> this reading vlog um, when Morbius decided that his butt was more interesting. Okay, settle down, babes. I know. I love you too. So you guys, I'm ready to start the creature feature and this is a collection that I have been dying to read because I have read, like I've said in the intro, four out of the six authors are featured in this collection and I think they are quite well known um, in the horror slash thriller community. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm excited to see if I enjoy the short stories by the authors that I already know. And I'm also really excited to see the other two because maybe I fall in love with those and then I can check out more books by those specific authors. I am going to be reading them in order as they are presented in Amazon. So the first one is going to be the Joe Hill short story. It's called The Prem. And um, as I've said before as well, the stories go from 30 to 60 pages, more or less. So I think this one is around the 60 page mark. Um, and I really, really love The Black Phone. So I'm hoping this is going to be another hit by Joe Hill. Um, like I said also before, my favorite one so far by him has been Nosferatu. It's a book that I would reread 
any time. If you have not read that book, read it this Christmas. You will thank me. Anyway, you guys, I am seated and ready to read The Prem and give you my thoughts on it. Obviously, these are short horror stories, so I will just give you a brief synopsis and we'll let you know my thoughts without any spoilers, of course. But I'm really excited. I haven't been reading many short horror stories lately and now I have this plus the new Stephen King book. So a lot of short horror stories now. You guys, I feel so stupid right now. I kind of had to Google what pram means. <laughs> because I don't know what a pram is. Like, I'm sorry, but that's not, that's not on my vocabulary. But apparently is what is shown in the cover of the book. So it's basically like a baby carrier or something like that, you know, like a trolley thing for the babies. Um, now I know. See? Already a little bit smarter. <laughs> Just by reading these short horror stories, you learn something new every day, you guys. Now I know what a prim is. Fantastic. I feel stupid, but now I know what it is. So, I guess, you know, I got that going on for me. Alright, let's talk about the prem. So first of all, content warning here for miscarriage. It is mentioned in the first few pages, so it's not a big spoiler, because the reason why it's important to the story is because we follow a main couple that is moving to a farmhouse or they are looking to buy a farmhouse and start over because everything in their apartment reminds them of the miscarriage since it happened at home and so they want to move somewhere else and they have decided that maybe you know the countryside the farmland might be something for them so the house that they take a look at it's very run down and it needs renovations but it is in an area where there is a group of people religious people almost like a cult um that plant trees <laughs> um and like, you can already tell that something's off in this place, something's off with these people, and you already can tell that they are seeing the good parts of it, uh, but it doesn't look like a great place to move in, especially not right now because it needs a lot of renovations. And one of them, when they were walking on this new potential house, ate a spider web. They commented on how a spider web tastes? No, thank you. I have nothing against spiders. I can, you know, put them outside myself. I don't mind them at all. But would I like to have their spider webs that come out of their arse in my mouth? I don't think so. I don't think so. So one day the husband goes to the store and he has to walk um, for some time until he gets to the store because things are a little bit far away from the farm and there is this local kind of store uh, where he can get all the groceries but he doesn't have like a big bag or anything to carry it back so the owner is like you know what I have this old pram here you might as well take it and use it to carry your groceries doesn't that sound shady to you <laughs> Anyway, this man says, oh, thank you so much. I'll bring it back, whatever. And it's like an old kind of moldy pram. Doesn't look really good. But William, our main character, doesn't even care. He just wants something to carry the groceries home. So he takes a pram and he starts hearing things almost like a baby is inside. But the pram is only carrying the groceries. So that's kind of like how things start. Um... And this book was very heavily a portrayal of grief, um, specifically from the point of view of a father. It's also a book that does give you this kind of 
isolated small town almost cult-like society or that's what I gathered from the beginning so I really enjoy the story and I would recommend it um I really like his writing this one even had like a like a breath of the shining in it a little bit um so I really had a good time with it but I have to say that from the short horror stories that I have read by Joe Hill the black phone and in the tall grass have been my favorite I think my absolute favorite is in the tall grass that one was co-written with his father Stephen King so I guess it makes sense why that is my favorite um and it's also the most disturbing one it is very intense there is a Netflix movie adaptation of In the Tall Grass and I found the movie quite good. I think they did capture what the novella was trying to portray and there were things that happened in the novella that were extremely disturbing and I thought they might not include it in the movie because, you know, not everybody's ready for that, but they actually did, you know, in the capacity that they could. Um, so I would really recommend you guys that novella and then watch the movie if you don't mind disturbing stuff. So we're off to a good start, you guys, because the first story I really enjoyed. And my original plan was to read one story per day. Um, but I'm so excited that I don't know, I might read the second one already today. Um, because the second one is actually the one by Grady Hendrix and it's only around 30 pages. So I feel like I might be able to fit it in. Hello guys, it's been like a second for you. It's been a couple of hours for me, <laughs> but I have also a coffee refill. So I thought, you know, it's Friday today. I'm going to treat myself to the second story. <laughs> Um, and the second story is called Ankle Snatcher and it is by Grady Hendrix. So, you know, I hope that I don't have the need to look under my bed tonight. Um, you know, in horror movies, there's always a scene that makes people like really uncomfortable to watch. Some people might be, you know, when they're opening the closet and you think there's something there for me is when I know the camera is about to go underneath someone's bed. It's so unsettling to me, especially if, you know, the camera work is done well and they do it like kind of slow and it's just, it can get very, very creepy. Come on, Morby, I see you there. I know what you want to do. There we go. You get the butt again. It is what it is. Um, so um we will see what this story is all about but you know that's the first thought that came to my mind <laughs> after reading that title is you know that feeling of you sitting on your bed and something touching your ankle absolutely not no thank you um i think it's a fear that we've all had at some point in our lives perhaps when we were kids or teenagers or whatever and you've seen some horror movies and stuff and like i said it's one of those scenes in movies that when i know it's coming even though i know what to expect or you kind of get ready for the jump scare because you can see the camera going underneath the bed but you're still like on edge and i love those scenes if they are done right um and if they are surprising which is not easy because it's been made a lot of times but anyways this story is only i think around 30 pages so i think i should be able to read it very quickly and then um i'll be able to tell you my thoughts on it this one is so short that i don't know how much i can tell you about it without spoiling it um but i am extremely curious about this particular story as well because as i always say Grady Hendrix is kind of like a hit or a miss for me in the sense that, you know, I enjoy all the books that I have read by Grady Hendrix. One of my favorite ones has been Horror Store and the Final Girl Support Group. Um, but the thing is that some of his books, I don't know why I enjoy them so much. There's some things about them that I don't particularly like. But at the end of the day, I can't stop reading his books and I am always addicted to his books. So I don't know what kind of weird magic he's putting on me, like some sort of spell or something. Um, but I'm still really excited to read his books every year. 
So I'm also excited about his new book coming out. Uh, I think it's this year, actually. Um, I just saw the cover the other day in Instagram and I thought it was really cool. Um, so we are going to sit down apparently here together, <laughs> more views than me. And I'm going to read the Grady Hendrix short horse story, Ankle Snatcher. And I'll let you guys know what I thought of it. Let's see if it's another weird trip. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, it's a good shit. Yeah, that's good shit. Yeah, that's the spot. Yeah, that's it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mommy has to read a little bit. Is that fine? Yeah, you can make biscuits. You can be here. You can sleep a little bit. Yeah? Okay. So you guys, I'm done. Morbius is done. He's taking a long nap. <laughs> what is he, honey? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. So I finished the story. And let me see what I can tell you about it without spoiling it. <laughs> so this was very much your typical boogeyman story. Let's, let's say it like that. So this is basically a story of a boogeyman. Um... But it's also about family, legacy, and mm -hmm, I don't know how to put this. It's all kind of really cool connected and it gives a little bit of a spin. It makes you think a little bit about the possible effects of the boogeyman. Like what if the boogeyman actually exists and people talk about it and say the boogeyman took this person, the boogeyman took that person. Uh, would we believe them or not? Um, I'm gonna leave it at that because <laughs> it's a very short story and I don't want to spoil the whole fun of it But it was actually really nice. I really enjoyed that one Now I'm screwed because Morbius is having a really good nap at the moment <laughs> But I have to go back to work, honey Yeah, I have to go back to work so that you can have nice things and as for you guys, I'll see you probably tomorrow when I will be ready to sit down and read story number three. So the story I'm reading today, it's called It Waits in the Woods by Josh Mallerman. And um, Josh Mallerman is an author that is also kind of like a hit or miss for me. I have really enjoyed uh, Bird Box. I thought Mallory was okay, the sequel. Um, he's, um, this one called something about Goblin. I think it was just Goblin that was like short horror stories. That one was not as much for me. I didn't love it as much as I had hoped. But I still enjoy his writing and I have actually pre-ordered also his new book that comes out at the end of uh, June. So I think it's called Incidents in a House or something like that. Incidents Around a House or the house. <laughs> um, because I'm really intrigued about that one since it's told from the perspective of a eight year old girl I believe. Let's talk about this short horror story. So we are in a small town and so far this one is giving me kind of Asian horror vibes because there is a legend that involves a bridge in the woods and apparently if you cross that bridge there is always some sort of demon around it and it is a demon that is missing its face. And so he's always looking for a face. And 
the legend has it that he steals other people's faces. So one day, a teenage girl goes missing in this town and the family and everybody gets a search party going so that they can try to figure out where she is. They go into the woods, they look everywhere, but they never find her. And three years later, the uh, sister from this girl that went missing decides that she believes that this legend might be the reason why her sister is missing. And so she decides to go into the woods by herself to find that bridge. She's determined to find the bridge and try to figure out what happened to her sister. Why would you do that by yourself at night? <laughs> if you do believe the legend is true. But then again, if she tries to tell the story to the police and everything, nobody believes her. So basically, she's the only one that can try to fix this but it's been also three years like do you really expect to find your sister alive at this point probably not um and so that's kind of how the story begins and i really like that it's very much kind of like yeah like a asian legend inspired kind of tale i would say it just reminds me of that kind of vibe you know of those forbidden forests and stuff like that um so it is quite enjoyable. The thing is, when I was reading this story, I thought this was going to be my absolute favorite from the ones that I have read so far. And I think it's still my favorite out of the three that I have read. Um, I think the atmosphere was great, the pacing, there's a lot of like tension. Um, I loved everything that started to happen when Brenda went into the forest to try to find her lost sister Amanda. Um, like I said, really like creepy vibes, um, almost like, you know, Blair Witch Project meets Japanese legend or something like that, a mythical creature. Um, and I really was into it and some things were happening that I was like really enjoying because they were messed up things. But I have to tell you, I did not love the ending as much as I thought I was going to love it. Um, and I cannot tell you why, <laughs> because obviously I'll, I'll be spoiling it. Um, but I was not a huge fan of the ending. But I think it's still my favorite out of the three. Um, just because it's the one that I have enjoyed the most in general, despite the ending. Um, so... Who would have thought <laughs> because I think the last short stories I read by Josh Mallerman were not my cup of tea but this one I really enjoyed um it's just the ending didn't land for me uh but that is the story for today for Saturday I don't have more time today to read any of the other stories anyway because we are going to start now with the bathroom renovations. We are doing everything ourselves so it means that we only work on the bathroom during the weekends. <laughs> um, I guess that's also why my reading has been a little bit impacted uh, because I don't have as much time to read during the weekend but I'm gonna be so happy once the bathroom is finished and I also cannot wait to start reading instead of a bathtub again. I've missed that so much. Um, so yeah, this was my story for today. I'm glad I really enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys all tomorrow, Sunday, for another short horror story. Time to go home guys. I just quickly went to the gym. I didn't have any workout planned for today but I wanted to shower so I just did 30 minutes cardio just so that I could then shower. <laughs> so let's go back home because I am really behind with my reading. 
So, <laughs> it's already Monday and yesterday I didn't read any of the short horror stories. Um, so I have to catch up today. So the plan now, you guys, is to go home, obviously, and to have a little bit of lunch because I am starving Marvin. And after lunch, I am going to enjoy a cup of coffee with our short horror story for the day. So, and after that, I have to keep on working, but I need to read my short horror story. I think I deserve it. <laughs> Yesterday it was just a lot of work, um, but the bathroom is slowly coming together. I think next Sunday we might start already putting the tiles on the walls, so that is very exciting. And as soon as all the tiles are set in the bathroom, the first thing we're gonna do is put the shower, connect the shower to the water because we are tired of driving so much to the gym. And honestly, I'm kind of glad in a way that it's mostly um, gray and rainy over here because if it would be like Spanish temperatures in the Netherlands at the moment, I would hate it to be home sweating and not being able to like take a cold shower before bed or stuff like that. So at least I guess that's the positive side of the weather not being the most summer weather. <laughs> um, so hopefully in like two weeks maybe we will be able to finally shower at home um so yeah i'm really excited about that obviously almost home for food coffee and a short horror story so i'll see you guys very soon reading my books good morning more abuse mommy needs the chair bad news for you are you gonna give me the chair do you want a hug do you want a hug yeah, you want a hug? Okay. Yeah. You're too big to climb, mommy. <laughs> You're too heavy to climb, honey. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll grab you. Hold on a second. Hi, guys. It is time to take a break from work and enjoy some coffee and some reading. All right, Mondays are really, really busy and I'm trying not to let stress affect me as much. Um, and I'm trying to find moments of peace to enjoy books <laughs> throughout the week because I feel like I'm always busy, busy, working, working, doing things. And uh, when I read, it's like, oh, I need to quickly get to some pages. And I want to find little moments on the day that I can just relax and enjoy my books. Um, so I'm making an effort and today we are going to be taking a break together with some coffee and I'm going to be reading the fourth short horror story in the compilation. It is called In Bloom and it is by Paul Tremblay. So this is the last one from the authors that I am familiar with. Four of the six authors I already knew and I had read multiple books by them. And the last two are authors that are new to me, which is really exciting because you never know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to get. But I really like Paul Tremblay. I feel like his books are also so very different from each other. There are a couple that I still have not read by him. The short horror story compilation and the Survivor Songbook. So I am really excited to read in bloom. I'm also really excited about his book release this year because it is about a horror movie so of course I am interested. So I am going to enjoy my coffee, enjoy my short horror story and I'll get back to you guys with my thoughts on it. I also like the covers for these Amazon original stories um, and I like the colors even though my Kindle is black and white but let me show you how in bloom it looks like. It looks like a swamp or something like that. So we might get a water creature here in this one. Um, so we shall see. Um, let's see what Paul Tremblay has to tell us about his creature feature. I've just finished the story and I have to report that sadly this has been quite underwhelming for me. I don't know if it's the subject matter that maybe it's less exciting to me than the other stories. This one felt very 
old school like 70s 80s kind of vibe um and it is a more slow burn and there is less action um less gore less disturbing stuff so maybe that is why it was a little bit underwhelming for me we follow a girl that um is very interested in investigating algae and the bloom and um, the toxins and everything that we get from the water um, and how that affects us as humans and why some people have had to move due to pollution and other things that come in the swamps and so she interviews someone that years ago had an experience with that and we follow the interview and we follow her investigating kind of so it was a little bit like i said underwhelming it felt like a very classic horror story very slow burn nothing much happens it's interesting you know it's kind of like a classic legend classic creature story but i was missing a little bit of oomph you know i was missing something um so it was a little bit underwhelming for me this has been so far my least favorite just because of that i still enjoy paul tremblay's writing and i like the story but like i said it was not as exciting as i had anticipated so so far sadly my least favorite but i still have two more to read and i think i'm gonna have to do that tomorrow because today i don't have any more time it's mondays mondays are really busy at work and so i'm gonna go back to work and i'm gonna take the time tomorrow to finish the last two stories that we have in the collection Look at me you guys wearing a sweatshirt in June. We are mid-June. Look at this. What's going on? Where's my summer? Who do I have to talk to? This is just the level of disrespect this year to all the Spanish people that are living <laughs> in places like the Netherlands and Germany. We feel offended, personally offended. But anyway, it is a time to finish reading all the creature books. I have two more to go, so I'm hoping to read them both back to back today. Um, it is Friday and I am hoping to be able to finish it <laughs> um, because I should have finished it a couple of days ago, but I've been really busy with work, with classes, with things. And yeah, I'm sitting down now finally to get it done um, and I'm really excited about this too because as I've said before these are two authors that I have never read before so I guess my experience is going to be a little bit different because I don't know what to expect um, and who knows maybe I'll find a new favorite. Does your cat also try to climb on you when he wants to be picked up or is it only my needy cat? Look at him he's like <laughs> babes! <laughs> He's trying to climb so that I pick him up like he's desperate to be picked up. Honey! Oh, Jesus. Currently being abused by Morbius. Yes, honey. Are you going to sit or what are we doing here? What are we doing? Yeah, I know. Come here. Come here. Yeah. Come here. Let me know if you have friends that say that cats don't like to cuddle, <laughs> that cats are not affectionate. I'll get them in touch with Morbius <laughs> because this guy has issues, M mummy issues. The next story that I have to read is called Best of Luck by Jason Mott. And I don't know what to expect. 
the good news is the cats are here. <laughs> I am under the blanket because, you know, if I'm gonna get a shitty weather, I might as well make it cozy for myself. And I also have needy cats, like I said, but I also have a nice warm coffee. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my treat for today. gotta talk about this short horror story um so far unfortunately it has been my least favorite um let me see what i can tell you without spoiling it so it is basically about two best friends that have known each other for many many years and one of them is not having a lot of luck in life while the other one has a lot of good luck so obviously the one that has not been having the best years is jealous of his friend and all of his successes. And so they meet one day and things escalate between them. Let me put it that way. <laughs> um, so that's all I can tell you without really spoiling anything. So it's a little bit about the people that are considered lucky in life and people that are considered to be unlucky. And if it's fair, if it's not fair, all of those things. Um, my only issue with the story was that the beginning is kind of, like, kind of like a small introduction to the characters and then we almost just jump straight into a climax that prolongs itself for the majority of the of the story and it starts to get repetitive because they both are explaining the same thing at some point over and over and I don't know it just got a little bit repetitive for me it didn't like wow me surprise me um, the writing style was fine, but I just felt like there was no spark in the story. Um, like, if I just take a look at the idea behind it, I like the idea, like the, the, the thoughts that went into it. I just don't think the execution is as great as it could have been. So sadly, this has been one of my least favorites, but I still have one more to go. The last one is called Big Bad by Chandler Baker, and it is the other author that I have never read before. So without further ado, we're gonna go and read that one and finish reading the whole collection. Um, but I mean, so far I've really enjoyed it, so I would still recommend it to you guys if you like this type of short horror stories. This is the last story that I have to read, so we're gonna go straight to it and I'll see you guys in a little bit with my thoughts on the last story. Time to wrap things up. I finished the last story and I think you can tell by the title, Big Bad, and by the cover that it's going to be about potentially werewolves because this is a collection about creatures and it is about werewolves. Now these evolves around a family and a stranger that comes knocking at their door in the middle of the night um, and supposedly knows them. So you wonder, is this going to lean into more of the creature feature werewolf part of the story? Is this going to turn into a home invasion story? So you don't really know at the beginning and there were a couple of moments that it was really exciting. I felt like every time the stranger would come knocking at their door and they had a conversation, um, I was excited about those parts. Um, all in all, I'm a little bit underwhelmed uh, by the story. I feel like the horror wasn't really there. 
um, apart from when the stranger would come uh, and knock at the door, th those were more like a little bit more thrilling moments, but um, I didn't feel like a huge tension or excitement in general with the story, but I enjoyed it. I think the the six stories in general that you are going to get in this creature feature short stories on Amazon. Um, I think it's really interesting because you have completely different types of creatures. You have some classic ones and then you have some that are a little bit more different and out of the box. I don't know which one would be my favorite, but definitely Ankle Snatcher is one that I really enjoyed because of all the commentary that that short story brings in just like I think that one was under 40 pages and it was great I really really enjoyed that one so interestingly enough I think my two top favorites from this collection would be Ankle Snatcher by Grady Hendrix and It Waits in the Woods by Josh Malaman I did not expect that but I think the type of horror that these ones portray and there were a couple of scenes that were really disturbing in this too. I think that's more of my cup of tea. Um, but there is a little bit of everything here in this collection. If you love short horror stories, if you love creature features, this might be something that you want to grab for your Kindle. It is only available for your Kindle as an ebook because it's obviously an Amazon Kindle original thing. So it's not something that you can buy in physical form. But I hope that you guys had fun and enjoyed the vlog. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on all the short horror stories, obviously spoiler free. If you have read the stories, let me know down below which one has been your favorite. I would be really interested to know. Thank you guys as always so much for watching and I hope to see you all as always in our next coffee time. Bye!